Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you. The Accepted Moon of Angel is Messenger and the Accepted Moon of Destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Atuza Rezian. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to both me and Atusa for you to join us and connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps, and take charge of your destiny so you can fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Atusa Razian, about how you can unle unleash your fulfilled life. Now, Atusa is recognized as a shaman, transformational heart centered healer, and spiritual guide, motivational speaker. She's also an award winning, best selling author, poet, and digital artist. Her passion is to help people um, light up by guiding them to release their traumas and reprogram their fear-based living to a more heart-centered, peaceful life. Atusa's extensive experience comes from years of transforming the life of her clients to tap in their truth, heart and experience their desired life and in turn change the lives of those around them. Because of this transformational experience, her clients refer to her as guiding light, life-changing, best teacher, mentor, and magic. She has been featured in USA Today, um, NC, NYC Journal, Potomac Lifestyle Magazine, Entrepreneur Herald. She has been a guest speaker at numerous podcasts, summits, and workshops. Now, with testimonials such as, my work with the Tusa has been such an incredible gift. I knew that there were blockages inside me that were tied into my past. What I did not realize was how much I was holding on to and the words experience in holding on to memories of my body. She provided me with tools to guide me on this healing journey that have been such a deep effect on my perception of my life and the universe around me. The act of just being trusting in my inner knowing and allowing life to flow. It seems like a simple concept and it is. And that is the beauty of it. And I am so happy I found her twos and her beautiful gifts. I was feeling out of sorts and weighted down by my emotions. A twos that listened, supported me and chose the energy work that fit my needs. I not only received healing, but valuable insights and peace. Highly recommend a twos. So without further delay, hello a twos and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I am doing amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Ah, oh, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both the two and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Tusa, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can unleash our fulfilled life? My journey... Um... Just like everybody else's, I think we all come to this physical form and at some point we forget our own magic, our own light and the reason we're here and um, which is part of the journey to forget. And we've left ourselves little clues here and there to rediscover who we truly are and so for me that was the case um, and um, i went through a lot of my own traumas which was my training the way i learned how to get here and rediscover sort of my truth and you know from parents being divorced revolution war uh, immigration and then you know stacked up again and uh, abusive marriage divorce uh, financial loss all of that to finally get to this place of like yeah this is where I was supposed to be all along 
And that's really how you unleash, unleash your fulfilled life is understanding and becoming aware of that everything has had a purpose in your life. And to really discover who you are is to let go of those layers and identities and personalities and personas, all those costumes that we created throughout our life to be sort of visible and get ourselves involved in reality of life and with other people. And as we let all that go, it's like there's this expansion of space that you're just there, you are, no judgment, no fear. And yeah, emotions can come and go because ultimately we're human. We came in this form to experience those emotions. But without the hooks of those identities and personas, they're just like little bubbles that come bloop, 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 and just disappear. Yeah, so, so true. But I think, um, you know, with with sort of like life today, it's so difficult for people to actually see past that with all the outside influences they've actually got coming into their lives. I agree. And that's where the outside influences, if you look at it, at everything that's coming to you, there is a purpose to it. And that purpose is a mirror for you to see you, who you truly are to see the identity that you formed in front of yourself and release it, let it go. That's the only thing the outside is doing for you. It's not about the drama that we've created. It's not about any of that. It's for you to really see you. It's like all these little mirrors, like you remember those fun houses like they used to have, it's like all of those mirrors. It's like every angle, hey, look, I can see every angle, I can't hide, and anything I hide, these beautiful mirrors around me are going to bring it out for me to see and say, oh, yeah, I see you now, I can say goodbye to you. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of actually thinking, of, um, uh, of actually th of thinking, you know, about everything that's going on around you. But I know that people are scared of seeing themselves truly and letting go um, of those things because it's kind of like a safety blanket for them mm -hmm. to think. It is. And there are a lot of different identities. I've certainly had it. And I think everybody has it. And that's really what I come to tell people about my journey is that if I can do it, you can do it. Because we've all hold on to those safety blankets and we don't recognize the safety that's already there. So there's a shift in thinking that trust, trust and the trust is built over time. So we're not gonna take the blanket out, you know, immediately, the full blanket, we're, you know, start taking little pieces of that blanket out, just cut little pieces. And that's how you build that trust that no, I am safe in this life. And it's like as if you are, um, I don't know people out there if they've done trapeze work. Um, when you begin to do trapeze, you know, and you're trying to, you know, go through that whole swing and jump, you're attached to a harness. And there's a net. And even though you know you're attached and you see the net underneath you, there's still a fear there. And that's okay. But that trust that, oh, you know, a reminder that I am safe. Everything is working out for me. And everything really, I've created this to see all the different parts of me, all those identities, so I can let them go. Yeah, I like, like the, so I like that analogy as well, trapeze. Um, with, with, yeah, you, you still have that, you still have that fear um, uh, that, that's there, but you, but you know, you, you know you're safe, but you have that, that external thing that you're not because you, you, uh, you, you know, you, uh, you, it, it just it just doesn't compute. So, how did you kind of like manage to um, 
you you know to get that trust to yourself because obviously you know you did go through some um traumatic stuff you know with everything that that went on so how did you begin to get the trust yourself to discover you know your your true potential um mantras really help um a simple mantra i'm safe all is well that simple reminder as you're going through life. And for me, I'm a visual person. So that visualization, I've actually, so um, I've jumped out of an airplane with a parachute, you know, tandem jump. I've done the, um, I forget the name, I guess it's a paragliding with the kite that you come and yeah. you, you know, again, tandem and um i've done trapeze and the interesting thing so the, all of those for visualization for my life as i'm saying i'm safe all as well because at those moments each of those moments when i sat at the edge of the plane you know jumping i was terrified i was truly terrified i closed my eyes and I told my um, tandem person that was, you know, the instructor, I'm closing my eyes. Is that okay? It's like, as long as you do what you were told, we're going to be fine. And I said, okay, yeah, I, I can do that. And, but that was it. I remind myself at that moment, like how fearful I was. Or when I did the um, pair uh, jumping, paragliding. I remember I was running, you know, this guy attached to me and we're running off a cliff and I'm like, and I was totally fearful of all those things that could happen, but everything was moving so fast that there is no stopping. And so those were actually, to be honest, easier fears, but the um, trapeze one. It was the funniest thing. I was totally frozen. I have a video of it. As I'm going up the steps, just the steps, I'm not even off of anything. I was like totally shaking and ha like a little bit from the top, I stopped. And the instructor was like, you can do this. I'm like, I just need a minute. <laughs> and I keep breathing and I went up and I stood there and he hugged me, he talked to me. And again, as like my brain knew I'm connected, there's a net, there's instructors, like really the worst case scenario, I could get a bruising. I mean, like I couldn't even break anything to be honest, but I was terrified. And as soon as like any, you know, they hold on to you and you know, when you're ready and you say, okay, they let you go, you just like swing off and I was t reminding myself in that moment, I'm safe, all is well. And that's again, when I've gone throughout my life is when I, those moments that fear came in, I reminded my body, yeah, the fear is here, but I'm also trusting I'm safe. This is a process for me to get through, to get to the other side, to shed the next layer, to move forward and it's okay. I'm trusting that everything is because we feel like everything comes to us in these narrow pathways that we have created, like a physical form has created, but it's not, it's really our biggest, truest form, our spiritual form, spirit, whatever you want to call that, our God self, divine self, it's already been created, but we're just not seeing it. So that I'm safe all as well always brings me down. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and and it is. You know, mantras can be um, so amazing, especially um, at the sort of like calming you down and getting you back into that flow state or that centered um, state because you're just concentrating on on that solely that everything else around you just kind of like disappears. So you sort of like come back to uh, to your to your center to yourself. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those and also, uh, you know, just movement, meditation. There's so many tools that you can use that is going to help you get back into your body, because that's the other thing. I think when we feel those emotions, we kind of there's an escape mechanism that we come out of ourselves and we get involved in the outside. 
but connecting with your body, with your breath, <clears throat> with your heartbeat, all of that brings you back to your body, tapping your body, anything, anything you can do to remind yourself in this specific moment, I'm safe. Yeah, a beautiful, beautiful way of, of, of doing that. Yeah, yeah, just touching. Yeah, I'm, I'm safe. Um, I'm, you know, I can feel, I can feel my body. I can feel my heartbeat. I can feel um, every, everything around me. So how did you end up writing a book? Or writing books, I should say, because you've got more than one book out. Yes, um, two of those are multi-author books. Um, I have a chapter in them. The first one I did was a multi-author. And that one, again, I think universe guides you. If you're open to it and you see it, you're like, oh, yeah, that feels good. Let's go there. And that's how I ended up with the chapter in my first book. It just, um, I don't even know how it popped up on my social media feed. I was like, okay, let's go do it. And then when I finished that, as I was finishing it, the sort of the idea, the energy of the my solo book um, formed. And I had a message and that, the message for that book was I wanted to basically bring the work I do with my clients out into a form that is simple and easy for anybody, whether they want to get help or not, whether they want to come to me or not. They have this tool, these guides that will help them and they see it in the, their life in a simpler way. And also the third book was another one of those things that had popped up. I'm like, okay, that feels good. Let's go do it. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and, oh, I've got a little bit blurry there. Um, so was it, was it easy writing those books? You know, did it just kind of like come into, into the flow of it or did they take a long while to write? The chapter, it was easy. Um, it was already formed. The book was more of, I had to get back into me and not let the outside guide it. Um, because when you're doing this with like, okay, I gotta get other people set the deadline for you. And I had to bring it back and I said, no, I need to do this my way, the way I, the process I do things, you know, it's the same process as, as my art. Everything is going to come together when it needs to be. I just need to trust and allow that flow. And once I stop that outside noise, then I let it happen naturally and everything worked out and it was easy at that point. And even with the last chapter book, that was funny too, because again, I let the, you know, I was on their timeline but they were trying to guide what goes in the chapter and i was like mm, no i gotta do this my way sorry you if you don't like it you can pull out my chapter but it still needs to be my energy in there and it did it just it flew after that yeah yeah which, which you know which is it's you know it's your authentic self um by 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 having that in there so you mentioned your art um, so have you always been drawing or doing art since you were a child or was that something that just came in in later life? So art is funny. As um, when I was younger, little, I loved uh, painting. I, I just loved the colors. It wasn't more about what I was creating. I loved colors. I loved shapes. Um, and, you know, and as most kids go through uh, this, I think, unless you're a prodigy, everybody tells you, well, don't be an artist because that's not gonna get you anything, that's a hobby. And then also they criticize your work as like, well, what is that? That doesn't look right. You know, you have to be taught how to be an artist. And so I stopped. <laughs> uh, not stop, like stop telling people that, you know, this is what I do and I uh, just would doodle and th do things for myself. But um, when it came time to sort of like pause, you know, the universe came to a halt for me that all the work I was doing and it just halted. That's when I picked up the art again, not as a 
hey, I need to put this outside, but I, I need this right now for myself. And when I started, it just came out and, you know, like I was saying with the chapter books or the book, it just flew out and it was there and it was easy and it kept coming and it kept coming. And then, you know, I'm like, somebody told me, hey, your art's good, put it out there. And I put it out there and I did exhibitions and uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, I'm an artist now. And like, well, do you have background? No. Did you go to school for it? No. Uh, that, 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 you know, that is just, uh, you know, that is one of the absolute amaz amazing things. So do you always just paint on canvas or do you um, use uh, digital art as well? How, how do you normally work? Um, I started with doing canvas, but then I couldn't get like what was in here out on canvas. I couldn't create what I wanted as easily or, you know, other people may, but I couldn't. And so digital was the form that I chose. So, and that's what I do as digital art. And it just, um, I take a lot of different pictures and I layer them, manipulate them. Um, I draw over them, I add to it and um they become these artworks that i print on you know metal canvas wood whatever you want posters and um i also then when i was creating i noticed like there's a sort of like a movement in there for me there's like music things that comes and then now i've also added on not all my arts have it, but a lot of them have an augmented reality portion to it where, you know, if you look at it through this free app, it comes to life and it starts moving and there's music and everything. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I like, I like, I like this. I like the sound because it's more interactive, isn't it? You can actually immerse yourself in the, in the, in the, in the painting and in the picture. Exactly, exactly. It's like because each one of them have like inspirational message or a poem or a quote to it. And sort of like when you see it through the movement, you're that inspirational message, you kind of like feel it a little bit more because you're in it. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, so, that's, that's so, so amazing. So, so do you work in person with people? Do you work with people online? How do you normally work with people and what, and what do you do? You know, um, I, I work with them either virtually or in person. Some of them are not even local. They're not in my area. They're all over the world. So um, yeah, the ones that are not here, um, I can do virtual. The ones that are here, sometimes the drive is too much. So they'll do some sessions in person or not. And um, I do different kind of services. Um, I call it different things and I let the client, it's like, what feels good to you? I'm not gonna tell you, choose this or that, um, because I'm your guy. You know, you gotta go with what feels good and you'll end up wherever you need to be anyway. You can always change your mind and say, okay, now I wanna try the other service. But basically all of them come down to guiding them to either if they're ready to release the traumas, we go release it, heal it, reprogram them. And if they're not ready for that, because you gotta be ready for that. I There have been clients, I'm like, if you're not ready to open those boxes, then don't, you know, um, do it when you're ready. And so then for those that are not ready, it's more guiding them to see those patterns, see those behaviors, see those identities, and sort of try now to see things a little bit differently, choose different. And once that awareness comes in, then you're ready. It's like, okay, yeah, no, I see it. Now I don't want this identity. Help me get rid of it. Yeah, so kind of like little steps really to... Uh... To, to 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 go through as, as you were talking about earlier just one little step at a time exactly exactly yeah beautiful so as you know i do angel oracle card readings and guided meditations and each week on my show i like to ask my guests whether they would like me to pull an angel oracle card for them or and those watching 
or do a mini guided meditation. So Tusa, what would you like me to do? Oh, definitely a card reading from you. Look, I've got the cards in my hand. It's amazing. <laughs> so as always, when I do the cards, um, I do the cards for what you need to know in you in the present, in the here and now. Because although I work with the past, when we when I take people to the past, it's to learn and heal from to bring you back to the present. And when I take people into the future, it's to learn and understand the future, know what steps you take so that you can come back to the present. Because as you were saying, you know, earlier, everything is really what we are doing here now at this moment in time, which is the most important uh, thing to us. So what does Tusa and everyone who's watching this live or the replay need to know for their highest good at this point in time? So let's see which card wants to come out today. So we have got discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth. Isn't that a beautiful card? And Amazing. And sort of like really ties in with what we've been talking about today. You know, th th that's what I love about the cards. They are always confirmation and everything about, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, about what, you know, what we're doing. So it is kind of like, you know, you you do stand in the light of truth at the moment you know you're allowing that that truth of what is to actually um you know be in your in your life now and there's all these different signposts and people that are coming along actually helping you stand in that truth and walking on that path that, that's moving forward so it's absolutely a brilliant um card uh, for you um and, and everyone watching and it's got some beautiful colors and I like the sheep. It is. Colors. I want you, if you can, please take a picture later and send it to me. I want to see the image better. <laughs> oh, I, I, I will do. It, 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 is, it, is, a, it is a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful image. So I'm, I'm really glad that card actually uh, came out. But as always, the cards come out exactly what, what is needed. So, Atusa, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Start, um, the really the biggest part of this journey is starts by loving yourself. Truly loving yourself unconditionally, seeing the beauty of you. And in order to do that, you got to see the bumps and bruises and cuts and whatever it's there. Even the pretty stuff, see it, they're beautiful. And once you get there to love yourself unconditionally, then things become so much easier because that naturally flows out from you to the world, to the people that come in contact with you. But the journey starts inside love yourself unconditionally beautiful wonderful words of wisdom to leave our show so i hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because i know i definitely have so too so if people want to connect with you how do they do it my website is the best way it's my first name last name dot com and on there all my social media stuff is there um, instagram facebook linkedin youtube all that stuff so yeah go ahead reach out to me we'd love to hear from you wonderful and what i'll do is um at the end of the show i will put a post in with all the links um so that you can uh, just literally click on a link and go straight to uh to Usa's pages so thank you so much, Tusa, for being on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I've really enjoyed having this conversation with you. Thank you. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck, or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me so we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to actually take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing in, into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. 
So again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you and could really do with their own hearing um, the words of wisdom that Atusa has shared with us today. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guide meditations, you know, and don't forget every like, comment, share, follow um, that you do, not just on my social media, but on Atusa's social media as well, really helps get our message out there so we can actually be of service and help more people. And you're part of that by sharing that information out there. And I look forward to you joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye.